I can repeat it. I am no longer a jazz drummer. I started off as a jazz drummer when I was young. And I found that jazz drumming was fill, filled with habits and cliches and things that you don't think about anymore. And I decided it wasn't interesting to always play the same patterns, to play songs that had a structure of A, B, A, B, solo, 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 melody. It wasn't interesting anymore. And also, the drummer in a jazz group can only make certain sounds. If you try to change the sounds, everyone in your group looks at you like you're crazy. And they tell you to stop it, you know? It's jazz, for me, is a form that is finished, a museum. Thank you for coming. I was a drummer who never sang. Most drummers have completely closed mouths when they play the drums, you know? It's like we are from another planet. We don't make sound, you know, here. And I, I, I found out by accident when I was practicing my technique that as I worked very hard to be a fast drummer, I was holding my breath and I was forced trying to play faster and I had no oxygen, no air in my body and when I played my hands would lose their oxygen and suddenly the sticks would fall out of my hands. That's terrible if you're a drummer. So I began to do a very simple thing. To make a drone with my voice so the air would go through. And then I got the idea, hmm, isn't it practicing? This sounds pretty good. Maybe I should do uh, something else. <laughs> do a little rhythmic kind of thing with that. Okay, well, that's a good low, but maybe I can add something high. And then I can combine the two, the, the drumming and the voice, and have the drumming go like this and have the voice go. As a rhythmic, melodic thing, as if the voice were like some kind of strange drums, you know? For me, making music and playing drums and singing is a way to create a world of performance, a world of sound. And I, I invite people to come to listen to this world and to come into it. It's not a world that pushes you away. I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in making a world that says, ah, what does that sound? Oh, what does that mean? Oh, what is that like? Oh, I like that. Oh, I don't like that. I ask for a participation from a listener and from an audience so that it becomes interesting to them and not simply what they always hear and what they do when they go to sleep or they wash their clothes, you know? No, I say, come along into this world with me, the, the weird drums, the strange voices, things from a dream, things from a fantasy. Come into it, I ask you.
This is a quartet. There are four musicians here who are capable of making almost any sound you can imagine and using the whole range of Western and even Eastern music. I mean, you know, John King on guitar can play down, down home, you know, dirty blues. I mean, super funk. I mean, James Brown stuff and then get into the country Western if he wants them, including the improvisation and intense sound and loops and sampling. And Gene King is like the absolute a mother of a, of, a, of a funk bass player. I mean, he just he just has all these things under his fingers and intense rhythmic rhythmic uh, loops and, and 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 beats going. And then there's me, and I'm you know playing the rhythmic push, the edge with the drums, with all my crazy sounds and metal and you know all this stuff that isn't really drums, but it sounds rhythmic. And then the vocal things that I do, which are for for a strange new way of using sound, talking but not using words, singing but not using normal melodies, expanding the voice to make some kind of new song. And Tom Cora is, to me, uh, one of the most versatile cellists. He can make the instrument as a melodic sound maker. He can use the instrument as a rhythmic attack, almost like a drum. He can suddenly use it on the bottom to make this incredible drone, or as a soloist, almost equal to a guitar in sound. When you look at the whole group, what you're watching is how people compose their music at the moment on the spot. The important idea in dance band is that, okay, you play the part, you play the idea, but you wait for the moment to take charge and to change everything by making a surprise. So if the audience, if people watch or listen or get ready for a surprise, then it takes them somewhere.
When I wanted to abandon the style of jazz as a drummer, it was very difficult because as you learn jazz, you spend years and years putting these habits into yourself. How to take your right hand on a cymbal and go ding, 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 ding. How to take your left hand and do ding, 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 ding. How to have your right foot and your left foot do these exact things and you work to make it perfect. So suddenly your body is working without your brain. It doesn't need your brain. And then you have to start using your brain to break those habits. So for example, with this right hand on the cymbal, I took a big towel and I tied the towel around the cymbal. So every time I hit the cymbal, it sounded terrible. I would play along and I go, <coughs> it sounded really awful. And so I would not play it, you know. But still, as I was improvising, I found that my right hand by accident or by habit was always moving over to play the cymbal. So I said, oh, this is ridiculous. So I took away the cymbal completely. No cymbal there. So now every time my hand went there, nothing. It was a surprise. It was a silence. It was a very important discovery for me because they don't teach you this when you're learning music. They don't teach you about surprise. a rhythm in one and a half seconds. That's a rhythm. And I can repeat it like that. It's no problem. This is a unit of time, a very clear rhythmic idea. And you can link these ideas together to make a form of rhythm that is longer made of very small units and they change. Okay, this to me is a very interesting idea of rhythm. You can stop and start any way you want. But inside this idea is the second concept, which is silence. Silence is the concept where you learn how to use surprise. Silence and surprise are almost equal. You know, when, when you stop, when you do that, you get someone to wait for the next thing. They're leaning for you, they're anticipating, the, the energy is building before the surprise happens. So the idea of making small, small units and then the moment of surprise where you can 
hit someone, but also uh, caress them at the same time. People have in their minds the idea that improvised music is actually quite easy to do and you could sit down, almost anyone who can play an instrument could sit down and improvise when there is no such thing as improvisation. In my mind, in the minds of a lot of the New York and American musicians, there is no th such thing as pure improvisation. Every musician is using incredible structure, the whole history of their musical education, their musical playing, everyone they've played with, concepts, rhythms, ways of making sound, millions of small, small segments of structure and the beautiful idea of this music is that everyone has a unique way to build a structure from these small elements. So yes, we're improvising, but we're using the blocks, the, the bricks of these structures to make the building and to say just improvising is impossible.
I personally go to a concert because I want the musician or the performer to do something to me. What I want is that performer to take me away from my normal world. That is why I go. It's the only reason to go. So when I play a concert and there are 500 people in the room, they are saying to me, David Moss, take me away.